Hi, this is Tom from zerodefinals.com. In this video, I'm going to be going through acute angle closure glaucoma. And as always, you can find written notes on this topic at zerodefinals.com slash acute glaucoma or in the ophthalmology section of the Zero Definals Medicine book. So let's jump straight in. Glaucoma refers to the optic nerve damage that's caused by a significant rise in intraocular pressure. The raised intraocular pressure is caused by a blockage in aqueous humour trying to escape from the eyes. If the aqueous humour is blocked from escaping the eyes, the pressure inside the eye builds up and this leads to damage to the optic nerve. Acute angle closure glaucoma occurs when the iris bulges forward and seals off the trabecular meshwork from the anterior chamber, and this prevents aqueous humour being able to drain away. Remember that aqueous humour normally drains from the posterior chamber into the anterior chamber and then through the trabecular meshwork and away out of the eye. But if the iris is bulging forward and sealing off the trabecular meshwork, it means the aqueous humour is trapped inside the eye. And this leads to a continual build-up of pressure in the eye. The pressure builds particularly in the posterior chamber, which causes pressure behind the iris and worsens the closure of the angle. So this extra pressure in the posterior chamber further presses the iris and further blocks off the trabecular meshwork. Acute angle closure glaucoma is an ophthalmology emergency and it requires emergency treatment to prevent permanent loss of vision. So what are the risk factors for developing acute angle closure glaucoma? Well they're slightly different to open angle glaucoma and the risk factors are increasing age, females are affected about four times more often than males, family history of angle closure glaucoma, being from a Chinese or East Asian ethnic origin, which is different to open angle glaucoma, which is more common in people from a black ethnic origin. Acute angle closure glaucoma is actually rare in people from a black ethnic origin. And also having a shallow anterior chamber makes people at higher risk. Certain medications can precipitate this acute angle closure glaucoma, and these are things like adrenergic medications such as noradrenaline, anticholinergic medications such as oxybutynin and solifenacin, and tricyclic antidepressants like amitriptyline, which have anticholinergic effects. So how does it present? Well, patients will generally appear unwell in themselves because it's such a severe condition, it makes people appear systemically unwell. They'll have a short history of severely painful red eye, blurred vision, halos around lights are typical, and an associated headache, nausea and vomiting. What might you see on examination? Well, they'll have a red eye, they'll have a teary eye, there may be a hazy cornea, there'll be decreased visual acuity, so decreased vision, the affected pupil will be dilated, it will be fixed in size so it won't be responsive to light and if you palpate the eyeball, the eyeball will feel very firm and hard on palpation. Let's talk about the management. Well there's some initial management and the nice clinical knowledge summaries from 2019 say patients with potentially life-threatening causes of red eye should be referred for same-day assessment by an ophthalmologist. If there's a delay in admission, for example, while you're waiting for an ambulance to arrive if you're in general practice, lie the patient on their back without a pillow, give pilocarpine eye drops, 2% for blue eyes and 4% for brown eyes, give acetazolamide 500 milligrams orally if it's available, and give analgesia and antiemetic if it's required, if they're feeling sick and there's a lot of pain. However, bear in mind, a lot of these things aren't easily available in general practice, so you may end up just waiting for an ambulance and they shouldn't delay the admission. Pilocarpine, which is the eye drop you use, acts on the muscarinic receptors in the sphincter muscles in the iris and causes constriction of the pupil. Remember that pupil constriction 
is a response of parasympathetic nerve fibres and these release acetylcholine, so they're muscarinic receptors or cholinergic receptors that cause constriction of the pupil. This makes it a meiotic agent and meiotic means shrinking the pupil. It also causes ciliary muscle contraction and both of these actions of pilocarpine helps to open up the angle and allow better drainage of the aqueous humour. Acetazolamide is a carbonic anhydrase inhibitor and this reduces the production of aqueous humour. So how is it managed in secondary care once they arrive at the hospital and they're under the care of the ophthalmologists? Well various medical options can be tried to reduce the pressure and this is with pilocarpine, acetazolamide, hyperosmotic agents such as glycerol or mannitol which increase the osmotic gradient between the blood and the fluid in the eye, helping to reduce the amount of aqueous humour. Timolol is a beta blocker that reduces the production of aqueous humour. Dorzolamide is a carbonic anhydrase inhibitor, similar to acetazolamide, and this reduces the production of aqueous humour. Rimonidine is a sympanomimetic that reduces the production of aqueous humour and also increases the uveoscleral outflow. But the definitive treatment is with laser iridotomy. And this is a surgical procedure that involves using a laser to make a hole in the iris and allow aqueous humour to flow from the posterior chamber into the anterior chamber. And this relieves the pressure that was pushing the iris against the cornea and it allows the humour to drain away. Thank you for watching this video. If you liked the video, left a comment or subscribe to the channel, thank you so much, it really helps. Zero to Finals is not just a YouTube channel, there's also a website with detailed notes, illustrations and questions, an Instagram account where new questions are posted every day to help you test your knowledge, books, flashcards and much more. I also have a personal channel where I share my thoughts and tips on learning medicine and you can find links to everything in the description of this video. See you next time.